I first met Zoe, it was at a bar over on the uh, 10th Street near on, on 2nd Avenue at a screening for Willoughby Sharp's cable program, East 10th Street. I had a pretty large apartment. So we dragged all her belongings in black plastic shopping bags with her luggage, brought it all up to 10th Street and uh, began our cohabitation. And we talked about it you know, sometime in the spring or summer, decided to get married and somehow picked Halloween as a good day. So uh, Halloween 1986, we went down to the municipal building. No, no big ceremony, no family. She left in February 97, but uh, there was no divorce or anything like that. It was just, you know, it was over. But on paper, we're still married. She could look many different ages, depending on how she made herself up. As she discovered in playing Ms. 45, she plays the role at age 17 of a kind of a mousy uh, garment worker girl. And then when she decides to go out and lure men uh, and puts on the makeup, she transforms into a real diva. Uh, difficult to pinpoint her age. The problem with the rats was that there were just as many living under the floor as up above with us, which I hadn't realized. So they started making little stinky piles in the hall, in the, within the walls, which other tenants could smell. And when other tenants started refusing to pay their rent, naturally, um, the landlord got somewhat concerned. She had a, a wonderful imagination. And uh, kind of an absurd, ironic sense of humor that we shared. Um, yeah, it was just always interesting to be with her. She was a great storyteller. And um, it was very animated when she would tell stories that it would be accompanied by you know, graceful hand motions. And she was very dramatic in her way of uh, telling stories many of which were made up or not, but, um, and, but writing Bad Lieutenant was another big push for her in terms of her um, popularity, as people respect that writing so much. But yeah, she spent nearly all her time writing. Zoe was one of the people who, who, who did heroin in a very measured way. She was not excessive. It wasn't a vice where she wanted to get high or escape or uh, she would do it almost religiously and go off and have wonderful imaginative dreams and she'd often come out of a dream and have more material for a screenplay she was writing. What made it great to her, she seemed to have found something that that just made her feel right and she felt right in that space. She felt right under the influence of that drug. At some point, the end of 96, she got a lung infection. And uh, I'm afraid the truth is that the boyfriend wouldn't let her see a doctor or a hospital because he was afraid their identities would become known as they were uh, dealing cocaine. So uh, she didn't get to a hospital until it became an emergency in March 99. And, uh, they thought she'd get better, but in the hospital, the infection spread from her lungs to her heart, and, um, and she died, they say, unexpectedly. I mean, they had told her mother that she would recover, but um, after being in the hospital for five days, she passed away one morning. On um, April 16th, 99, in the hospital in Paris, her mother, Barbara, went over, identified the body, had it cremated, and I guess about two or three weeks after Zoe's death, uh, Barbara scattered her ashes on the Seine under the Pont d'Art, the Pont des Arts, which crosses the Seine right in front of the Louvre. So in, uh, in September 99, when I went over to Paris, I went to visit this spot um, beneath 
the Pont des Arts, right on the Seine. I went, it was late at night, 11.30, midnight. <coughs> there were a few tourists walking behind me, but as I, I went down just to look at the water and uh, crouched down, and I swear, a little rat came up and stopped right nearby me. And I just, it just touched my heart to think that the moment I went to look, look at the spot where her ashes had been scattered, a little rat came up and almost as though he was greeting me. She would have been touched.